Our Inheritance, a Safe Haven Orphanage Mystery by Patricia Asedebega. Episode 1. In loving memory of Rita Odu, reminiscent past conversations inspired me when I was mulling over the title for this audio series. Uche, your presence would be greatly appreciated outside. Mr. Obona has arrived and he's very upset. Dorcas, the receptionist, nervously poked her head through the door. Uche got up quickly and walked out to the packing lot of the small mechanic workshop. There were three roofed partitions that had been constructed in the front space of the auto repair shop, and under one of them, a middle-aged man was shouting at Buddy, one of the mechanics. Catching sight of Uche as he approached, the irate customer turned his attention to him. Uche! What is the meaning of this nonsense? Do you think I have time to waste or that I don't know of other repair shops I can take my car to? I am only trying to help my friend Tom by sending business his way. And this is how you repay my kindness? Mr. Obona shouted at him. Uche observed him in silence, waiting for him to state the reason for his annoyance as Bode slipped away unnoticed, probably relieved not to be the recipient of the man's anger anymore. He also knew that the only reason Mr. Obona had brought his car to them was because Tom, Uche's boss, gave him a good discount. It was not for an altruistic reason, as he was claiming, but it was not Uche's place to point that out. Is it normal? No, tell me. Is it normal that you should have my car for four whole days simply to inspect the faulty brakes? Every time I have called to inquire on the progress, I have received a different excuse. So tell me, what is going on? Because now your man is still repeating that the work is done but that I still have to wait before collecting it. Wait for what? Mr. Obona had gotten really close to him, his voice rising as he took each step. Uche looked at him coolly, waiting for him to be quiet. There was only one person responsible for the fiasco he was having to deal with. Looking around, he saw that the person was, of course, nowhere in sight. He decided to try to defuse the situation quickly. There was a lady waiting nearby, a customer, who was obviously listening attentively to the conversation, and bad publicity was something he tried to avoid whenever it was within his power. I am sorry, sir. We have actually finished working on the car. All that is remaining is for it to be washed. The man looked at him through narrowed eyes. The interior will be washed too? He asked. Of course, sir. It will be ready in half an hour. Why don't you go into the reception area meanwhile and have a seat? It's quite hot outside and you'll be more comfortable there. He escorted him, leaving him in Dorcas's care. Knowing Dorcas and her excellent customer care, Uche was sure she would even find a way to get him to pay the bill without complaining whilst he waited. Uche was well aware that Mr. Obona had not washed the interior of his car in years, and that he was seizing the opportunity of the delay to get all the extras he could out of them. It wasn't the first time that Uche had dealt with him, Mr. Obona was the type of customer who tended to blow up situations, knowing that he would always be placated with some benefit or other. Uche did not have to search very far for the culprit behind the delay. He knew exactly where to go. Sure enough, sitting in the canteen next door with a group of local touts was Osarobo, bottle of beer in hand, laughing away and talking loudly to his captive audience. Osarobo, why is Mr. Obona's car not ready to be collected? He asked tightly. He was not one to easily get angry, but he was dangerously close, especially as Osarobo acted like he hadn't heard him. But Uche knew that though he pretended not to see him, Osarobo was looking at him from the corner of his eye. So when Uche took out the phone his boss had given him and started dialing, there was a quick movement and Osarobo stood up. Ah, cool down Uche. Who are you calling? I was only having my breakfast. We are allowed a small break for that. It is the right of every worker. I intended to wash the car afterwards. You have 20 minutes to do that when you come in at 9 a.m. It is now almost 12 noon. Mr. Obona's car had better be ready in half an hour. Because if not, I will call your uncle. And just so we are clear, I won't only be telling him about today. There is a whole list of complaints I will be making him aware of. He walked away hearing Osarobo complain loudly. It was so frustrating having him there. He had been ecstatic when he had been made head mechanic of Tom Osunde's smallest automobile repair shop. 
Uche was the youngest mechanic there, but he had been chosen for the role. He had worked really hard and it had finally happened. But when Osarubu had been transferred to the same garage, his heart had sunk. His mother had told him that he was getting ahead of himself, that maybe the other young man would not give him any trouble. But if there was one thing Uche could be sure about, it was that Osarubu's photograph was next to the word trouble in the dictionary. No other words were needed beside it in form of an explanation. Of course, being the boss's nephew, Osarubo had expected, in his constant delusional state, to get the promotion, and so when it had been given to someone else, he had not received the news well at all. He complained at every possible opportunity and worked as little as possible. Unfortunately, those were not the only problems. It was Thursday, the day Tom Osunde went by each of the three mechanic workshops to collect the weekly earnings which he would take to the bank on Friday. Uche was nervous as the new head mechanic and wanted everything to be perfect. He definitely did not want to give Tom Osunde any reason to regret his decision. He worried that as they were smaller than the other two businesses, the profits would be lower, which was logical, as they couldn't hold and work on the same amount of cars at once. He did not want to be a handicap, though, and not be worthwhile enough to stay open. Albert, will it be ready by tomorrow? He asked the middle-aged man who had just closed the bonnet of a car he had been working on all evening. He liked the unassuming quiet man who had taken quite naturally the fact that someone younger than him was giving him orders. Yes, of course. Mrs. Opute will be here at 11 a.m. She wants to travel with it the day after tomorrow and has called twice to ensure that it will be ready. Apparently, she had problems with her former garage, but I assured her that would not happen here. I'll wash it just before she comes to pick it up. Thanks a lot. Uche smiled at him and wrote down something in the notebook he used to record the state of every single car that came in and went out. He walked over to Buddy, who was trying to fix the door of the car he was working on. The car had been involved in a parking accident. The guilty party had not left a note or anything and the owner had done a lot of complaining when he brought it in. Uche stayed and helped him for a short while before moving to supervise the work of the third mechanic. But Buddy hurried after him as he walked away. Uche, wait a moment. The boss is coming today. Could you please ask him if I can have an advance on my next month's salary? He was a 27-year-old man, tall and lanky with his afro cut in the latest fashion. Another one? You asked him for one two weeks ago. At this rate, you aren't going to have any salary left. Uche looked at him in surprise. I know, man, but I really need the money. Please ask him. Bode looked at him pleadingly and Uche nodded. It was really not his business and so did not wish to pry further. He'd ask Mr. Osunde, who, depending on the mood he was in, could be generous or not. Daniel was sitting on a bench in the work area, his overalls covered in grease. Like Osarobo, he had not at all been happy when Uche arrived on the scene. A short and plump man in his thirties, he had felt, and still did, that his dedication to the business was not being appreciated. However, while he showed his initial displeasure a bit more than would be considered necessary, he did do his work well. He was a good and experienced mechanic. Doing the rounds before the boss arrives, I see. Trying to make sure everything is perfect to secure your position? He asked as he shook his head. You know I do this every day. But of course, nothing wrong in impressing the boss either. The clutch arrived this morning. I'm guessing it has been changed? Uche asked. Yes, sir. The man made a mock salute with his hand. I honestly would sell off that car and get a new one. This is the definition of throwing away good money. It is an antique piece that is here almost weekly. But the customer pays, so he decides. Yes, he does. It is a beauty, though. Uche studied the car appreciatively. He enjoyed getting his hands dirty in the garage. That was the part he missed most since he had been made the manager. He normally rushed the office work so he could get to the workbench area. The sound of an approaching car distracted him from his thoughts and he walked outside. Tom Osunde got out from the open door. Osarobo was the first to arrive at his side. He gave a quick greeting, but his uncle was studying him through narrowed eyes. Good evening, sir. 
Uche greeted him. Good evening, Uche. Osarobo, come with me to the office. I suspect your presence will be required. The young man in question threw a glance at Uche, who shrugged his shoulders. He had no idea what it was about. Their boss went into the little office, sat down behind the desk and looked at something in the laptop for a moment. Uche had sent him the weekly finance report. They both waited, Osarobo fidgeting, probably thinking of the many reasons that he could have been called. I got an earful this morning from Eric Obona. Uche, please explain what happened. Their boss finally asked when he raised his eyes from the screen. He came for his car and it was not ready. It... What was left for it to be ready? He left it here a few days ago, Mr. Osunde asked. It hadn't been washed, Uche replied. You see why I called you in, Osarobo? I didn't want to shout at you and have the whole neighborhood to hear me. Your mother says I need to speak to you in a more delicate manner. But how? How can one do that? Every day it is a different story with you. Osarobo, let me ask you nicely, just in case there is a good reason that will explain and excuse the situation. Why was the car not washed? The youth in question put his head down, refusing to reply. Uche hoped he would not be interrogated further. Osarobo would sulk for days whenever a witness to his misdeeds was called to corroborate the real version of what he was being questioned about. That was often his reaction. Nothing was ever his fault. Oh, you are silent now. Do you know that sometimes I drive past this street to see what is going on in my business? Tom Osunde asked his nephew who looked at him with his mouth wide open. I have done so three times this week. Do you want to take a guess at what you were doing on those three occasions? No, don't answer. Let me show you. The man took out his phone and beckoned Osarobo, who inched closer, but on alert, ready to dart in case a hand shot out in his direction. His uncle had been known to reach out for him in what no one could describe as a delicate or friendly way. Uche did not need to look at the images. He already knew where the young man spent most of the day. I see that you have decided to remain silent, Osarobo. You are not my only nephew, but you are responsible for all the grey hairs on the left side of my head. I told your mother that... He was interrupted by a knock on the door. Dorcas came in with a drink for him as Osarobo looked at the open door, probably wondering if he could make a run for it or not. Thank you, Dorcas. If you have put the money into the briefcase, please bring it. The girl went out and came back with the briefcase that Tom Osunde used to collect his money. There was a silence in the room as he counted the notes. Finally, the man looked up at them. Ten thousand naira is missing. That is impossible, sir. I count the money I put away daily, twice. Docker started saying, shock on her face as Uche took the notes from his boss and counted them. None of the three times he did, it gave a different result. Where is my money? Tom Osunde shouted. If there was one thing everyone knew he could not stand, it was dishonesty. I'll go and take a look at the till and the surrounding area. Maybe some notes fell through. Some notes? How many will fall for you to notice? Before I open my eyes, my money had better be on this table. All of it! Docker scrambled out of the room, a worried look on her face as Uche went over to the safe. He always kept the earnings of the day there when Docker's handed them over to him. Just before closing hour, he had taken the envelopes out and handed them over to the secretary for her to add the day's earnings for when their boss arrived to put them in the briefcase he had left at her desk before he had entered the office. No, there was nothing there. The young woman came in nervously. I did not find anything, sir, but there were no errors in the daily earnings. Uche, you know I always check and cross-check. Someone must have taken the money. Who? Tom Osunde asked, and Dorcas pointed to Osarobo, who exclaimed in shock. Me? Uncle? You know I have never taken anything that isn't mine in all my life. The youth protested in his usual dramatic way. Yes, you, Osarobo. The day before yesterday, you came in just after I had finished counting. Then the phone rang, and you were standing very close to the envelope. Sir, it was him. Only last week I caught him opening the till. 
He said you asked him to buy something, but when I asked him to sign the book for the money, he refused. He took the money, I am sure of it. Uche looked from one to the other, still trying to understand what had occurred in such a short space of time. Osarobo was spluttering in anger as the receptionist was nodding her head in an accusatory manner. See, I don't even need to show your mother the images of you wasting my time at that bar. I told you last week that the next thing you did would get you out of here. Osarobo, you are fired. Ha, uncle. Even real criminals have the right to a just trial. So Dorcas, who has probably been falsifying invoices, accuses me and you choose to believe her over your own flesh and blood? What will people say when they find out? The man asked his elder relative as he shook his head in what Uche was sure was pretend sadness. See, I don't care what they say. If they like, they can print a front page story announcing what you consider is an unfair treatment of you. You can keep the 10,000 naira. It is a small price to pay for getting rid of you. And see, let me just warn you. Tell your mother that if she dares come here to create another of her sins, I will report this matter to the police. Osarobo, get off my premises now! Ha! I am finished. My enemies have finally succeeded in harming me. Osarobo, prone to theatrics, continued begging his uncle as the man got into his car and drove away. You are a wicked woman, you! Uche got between them both as Tokas hurried out of the room. He then escorted Osarobo off the premises with Body's help, still not believing what had just happened and how fast it had all gone down. And he didn't go home. We locked up and there he was standing outside the premises and shouting, saying that we would meet him in the same place tomorrow morning. Uche was telling Chidi and their mother what had occurred that day. But that was very unfair of Mr. Osundi. He has treated you very well, and for that I am very grateful. But this is his nephew we are talking about. Yes, a troublemaker. But what if he's innocent? Gloria Olotu asked. Mama, I think he's guilty. And even if he did not steal this time, then he's being fired for his many other infractions. The reason why he was sent along with me to my new destination was because he was caught altering a customer's invoice to keep part of the money for himself. It was probably not the first time he had done that either. He honestly is someone very difficult to... Where is he? Where is the person that got my son fired? Uche or whatever you call yourself. Come out here! There was a banging at the metal gate that led to their property and three of them looked at each other. Uche recognized the shrill voice on the other side of the entrance. Left to him. He'd leave her hitting the door all night, but he knew that their mother did not want any trouble with the neighbors, some of which were looking for the slightest opportunity to confront them and repeat how unwanted they were in the area. It was something they were always ready to remind Uche and his family of. Uche's mother got up and both young men followed her. She motioned for one of them to open the huge double metal gate, and when Chidi did, Osarabo and his very disheveled mother, Joe, rushed in. Her head tie was knotted around her waist, an unmistakable sign that she had come ready for battle. Osarobo, what are you doing in my house at this time of the night? Uche asked. He was not one prone to participating in scandalous scenes and only used his voice when necessary. And what time is it appropriate for us to come and tell you and all your family what a wicked individual you are? Not content from taking my son's rightful position in the family business, you then went ahead to plot for his dismissal. Osarobo, I told you that your uncle could not have taken such a sudden disliking to you. Someone had to be adding kerosene to the fire and you are looking at the guilty party. Joy shrieked, pointing at Uche, and her son nodded like he had just discovered an entire galaxy unknown to everyone else. Madam, please lower your voice. Why don't you come in and we can discuss this matter like adults? Uche's mother said in a placating voice. Lower my voice. This isn't me shouting. When I start, you will immediately be able to tell the difference. According to you, am I to fold my arms in silence whilst my son is treated so unjustly? I know you don't understand what a real mother feels. All these children are someone else's. But when you carry a life in your womb for nine months, what pains him, pains you, and his battles are your battles. Uche saw his mother gasp like someone had just hit her. 
he felt the anger swell in him. How dare they come to their house and insult his mother? Enough! Osarobo, get out of my house! I can see that you have not told your mother why your uncle believed the story. Madame, I will treat you with the respect that you have not shown towards my mother. Your son is fond of taking things that do not belong to him. I have seen him do so. He has kept customers change. He has taken more money to buy one thing or the other and either does not return what is left or giving countless excuses when he does not bring what he was asked to buy. He has made fake invoices, charged customers more and kept the difference. And that is not something that we suspect. We know it for a fact. We have received complaints about it. Osarobo, from the look on your mother's face, I can see you have not been honest with her. You are not happy with halting his professional success. You now want to sully his name as well. I know my son, he is not a criminal. If anyone is dishonest here, it is you. You used your situation to gain my brother's sympathy and skilled positions in the business. Where are your parents? Why are you here? Go and look for them and give back what is not yours. You think that because you don't have anyone that can leave you an inheritance, you can warm yourself into my innocent brother's good books and rob my son of what is rightfully his? Think again. Look at me well and listen carefully to what I'm about to say to you. That will only happen over my dead body. Osarobo's mother sentenced panting as her son nodded in agreement. Uche was about to ask them to leave again when his mother intervened. Madam, you can come and shout from today till tomorrow. It won't change the fact that it was your own brother that fired your son. Don't ever come to my house again to insult my children. I am a very calm person, but... Uche opened the door and made a gesture for them to leave, but Joy folded her arms stubbornly, refusing to budge. Chidi walked towards Osarobo, and Osarobo grabbed his mother's arm and started hurrying towards the door. Mama, let's go. If he could get me fired, what else are these people capable of doing? They won't sleep well this night or any other night for as long as they leave, Osarobo declared. I will go now. I have said my peace for this night, but I will come here every single night until my son gets his job back. Everybody in this street and the surrounding ones will know what a wicked family you are. With those words, they both marched out of the house, leaving the three occupants staring after them in silence. Everyone, go back to bed. Uche's mother ordered. Uche turned around and as expected with the tremendous racket Osarobo and his mother had made, all the inhabitants of the house had come out and were watching. Uche looked at them, sad that they had heard all that their uninvited visitors had said, especially regarding him not having a right to anything. Uche had developed a thick skin when it came to dealing with narrow-minded people, but he knew some of his brothers had issues that did not need the added negativity. I'll call my boss tomorrow. He needs to put a stop to this. They can't just show up here and you can be sure that they'll do so as many times as possible. Strange how she's not even taken into consideration the fact that her son was fired for a reason. Uche said. Those two are evidently troubled. But what if she's right? What if her boy is innocent this time? Gloria Olotu turned to the two sons that she had brought up as if they were hers. Innocent? Osarobo is the most unscrupulous person you can think of, and whatever your imagination can conjure up will still fall short of reality. He was near Dorcas's desk today when she was counting the money. I'm guessing he's done the same operation almost every evening, waiting till she had counted the money and then taking some out. No, he's guilty. Look, from what you told me about him on other occasions, he's someone to keep a close eye on. But Mama is right. It feels like he was accused more for his reputation than with actual proof. Like nobody wants him around. But what if he's actually innocent? Chidi asked. So basically he steals every day. And you're saying that on the off chance that he might be innocent this time, he should get a free pass? That guy is toxic. We all have to pick up his slack. He does not like working, just complains about every single task that he's asked to perform. He makes working with him incredibly difficult. Uche frowned as he responded to what Chidi had said. Still, he was fired for stealing on this occasion, not for any of the things you mentioned. Think about this. If he didn't do it, then someone else did. Being the manager, I suggest you look into it. His mother patted Uche on the back, but he shook his head. No, 
This was not the case of someone being framed. One had to work with Osarobo to understand what it was like and why it was so easy to arrive at that conclusion. I tell you, that woman was serious. By the time Uche gets to work, someone will probably be waiting for him with his stuff packed in a plastic bag. Henry, alias Small But Mighty, was telling Nicholas and Ada the next morning. Uche stood outside the door for a moment, listening to them. His boss is happy with him. Nothing that happened was Uche's fault. Why would he get sacked? Ada asked. Because sometimes the good guys don't win. Did you not all hear the same thing I did? That woman does not want Uche walking there, and she is the sister of his boss. Who do you think will win this battle? Small but mighty asked again as his two siblings remained quiet for a moment. And if Uche loses his job, things are going to get even more difficult for all of us, Nicholas said. That was enough. Uche thought and opened the door. How about you guys don't worry about something that has not happened yet? It is true that not everything that happens is always fair, but I got the promotion because of my work, so if somehow I get fired, don't worry. I'll find another. My resume speaks for itself. His siblings jumped guiltily as he walked in the room, but still looked worried. How can you say that? I keep hearing people complain about how difficult it is to find a job. I have been seeing Uncle Jide for months, go in and out of his house, and I heard him tell Mama the other day that he applies for every single thing, even jobs he is overqualified for. Ada asked, worried as Uche looked from one to the other. Not being good with words, he stopped for a moment, wondering if what they were imagining was so far-fetched. He was not going to worry about all the possible worst-day scenarios. He had always tried to live the present, and that was not going to change. He smiled at them and turned around to leave the kitchen. Uche, I think you should investigate, like I did when my math set went missing, just so you don't get caught off guard by any surprises. I don't trust that woman. Nicholas said, Anuche smiled at them in a reassuring manner and turned around to walk away. Uche arrived at the workshop before anyone else as he normally did. It was a habit of his to get as much office work done so he could dig into any car that came in. Half an hour later, he heard sounds in the adjoining office to his. Dorcas was also a very punctual person. A few minutes later, there was a knock at the door. Good morning, Uche. I just put the kettle on. Would you like a cup of tea? She asked, and he shook his head. Dorcas, I'd like to go over what happened yesterday with Osarobo. Have a seat and tell me all you can remember about this last week and the collection of the money. The young lady sat down as she nervously pushed her glasses back. Uche observed the plump young woman for a moment. She always looked professional, her braids tied back in a ponytail. Is anything the matter? I thought it had all been cleared up, she asked. Apparently, but at the same time, it is worrying that considering that only two of us have access to the money, but Osarobo still managed to have gotten his hands on 10,000 naira. You've been working here since the shop opened three years ago. Has something similar happened before? The girl shook her head energetically and then she frowned. About a year ago, something unusual did happen. But it was 5,000 naira. Mr. Osunde came to collect the earnings just as a customer had paid and left. He was in a hurry, so I gave it all to him. We had been without a manager for a few months and so he was coming in daily to supervise and was spending quite some time here. I was clearing up my desk when he came back in to tell me that there was money missing. I turned my workspace upside down and it did not come up. I was scared that he would ask me to pay for the difference, but he only told me to be more careful. Do you remember if anyone come near your desk all day? Who was working here at the time? Uche asked her. We all worked here except Osarobo and yourself. We had the same cash register that we do now. The key was normally hanging on it. Now I keep it in a safe place, even if I am there. I normally count the money in it twice a day, when I come in and before leaving. On that day, I didn't do the last count as the boss was in a hurry to leave. I really thought it was fine. 
I had to leave my desk a few times. I think the last customer probably did not give me all the money. Or maybe he did and somehow took Pat out. He was a new customer. He actually never came back. I think he was a fraudster. Is there a possibility that you gave him too much change? How did he pay you? Uche asked. He saw the girl's expression change. That is impossible, was the offended reply he got. Uche observed her quietly. He really had not had any complaints about her work ethic. She was always punctual, cordial with the customers, and in the nine months he had worked there, she had not taken a single sick day off. So what about yesterday? Who knows the new hiding place of the key? Who was around your desk? If the money went missing from previous days, it must have done so in the time between when you counted it and when you gave it to me to keep in the safe, Uche said, and Dockers frowned as she considered his words. This is from this week, and the only two days when there was that window you speak of was yesterday and Tuesday. On Tuesday, I did count the money and cross-checked with the daily invoices. Then my phone rang. It was a personal call and I went outside to pick it up as Daniel had come into the office to drop the keys to the car he had been working on and I did not want him to eavesdrop on my business. I did keep the envelope in a drawer before leaving and I was not out for more than five minutes. When I came back, nothing seemed amiss. The truth is that Daniel dropped them and left. But I have no idea if anyone else came into the office whilst I was away. This Friday, Osarobo had been around my desk and it really felt like he was just making idle conversation. Some of the things he said did not make a lot of sense. But they also came in for his cold drink of the day. I think that was all, really. I don't know why you are asking all these questions. You know that Osarobo is not an honest fellow. In the short time you have both been here, how many times have I reported him to you because I asked him to buy me something and he did not bring the change back to me? Was it not only last month when he came and asked me for 15,000 naira, saying that you had asked him to go to our suppliers for a fan belt for the Toyota that Body was working on? He thought that because I had a lot of work, I would just open the cash register and give him the money. What happened when I asked you? Uche sighed and thanked Dockers as she left. All the questioning took him well out of his comfort zone. He was someone that was quite comfortable, barely uttering a few sentences in days. He was fine living in silence. The sound of loud voices approaching his office took him out of his thoughts and suddenly Osarobo and Joy burst into his office. Joy was breathing heavily, very ready for battle. Her son walked triumphantly behind her. Oh, just look at the expression on your face. You thought I'd let it go. Sit quietly at home whilst you of all people buried my son under a mountain of fabricated lies and evidence. If that is the case, then you have incriminated the wrong person. She sat down heavily across the desk from him, arms folded, and Uche reached out for the receiver of the landline. There was no way he would be dealing with them. This was a family matter that his boss had to resolve. There was not enough money in the world to make him want to deal with this woman and her lovely offspring. To stay up to date with Patricia Asedegbega's work, Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.